Welcome to Markitecture, where you can get smart fast with in-depth interviews of leading technology vendors. I'm Mike Shields, and I'm here with Jen Chen. She's the president and CRO of Canatics. Hey, Jen, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So let's uh, let's start from the top with the big question um, that we'd like to, to kind of open things up with. What does your company do? Canatics is a platform for video that helps publishers create um, activate video inventory, manage video monetization, and also helps buyers on the other side get to the cleanest path of high quality premium video. You said mentioned you live on publishers' pages. Sure. So are you that that makes me think you are, are you the player that they use to get video on their or either to to you know decide what video they're running or actually have it run? Is that and then and then there's also an ad sales element to that? How, what does that look like for customers? Exactly. I think that's that's good. I didn't want to give you the whole story. I'm glad we're digging into it now. Yeah. The technology is a video player. So you're okay. absolutely right. And it it lives there. It actually is viewable. And, and you can go to many of our publisher sites like AccuWeather, Reuters, Vox, um, Forbes, BuzzFeed, and see what it does. So it activates content. So that's one piece of it. And we'll get okay. to the monetization side as well. It activates the publisher's videos. So they shoot a video, they use your you guys to get it out there. Yeah, that's that's one use case. The editorial team can also take um, some of our content library and the different um, offerings we have in our content suite and enhance, merge, edit video. So that's so kind you, of when you say your content, you guys don't, I don't, is that licensed content? For, you, don't, you don't produce your own. News and stuff, I'm assuming. Correct. We're not a production studio, but what we do is we do use a lot of our machine learning. We use a lot of our technology around uh, that contextual bit I was able to get into later mm -hmm. um, and help them uh, take bits and pieces of the existing content they have and visualize it. Um, okay. a, really good, a really good use case, um, or if, if you can kind of uh, uh, close your eyes and imagine, is where you could take stock market data, right? That's a data feed. Mm -hmm. We're using machine learning and we're able to pull that in and actually use our computer vision and graphics to give an editorial team a starting point to make numbers animated, for example, off of that feed. Okay. Or to have a voice over reading the key highlights of the stock market information. And then what they would do is take a lot of their current content. They would take all the other things that they, uh, they do produce themselves and be able to kind of merge that into a video experience. Okay. That's what our content offering would be. So that it sounds like a couple of different things there that you, it sounds like you can take existing a text-based um, articles and turn them into video or use them as the base of a video. Or you can also just take data feeds and things you have and Instead of having to shoot a video on, uh, from uh, from scratch, you can use those tools to get started. Is that where, where, where I would think about it? Exactly. Or enhance, right? So someone could already have a video and they want to include um, a stock market uh, you know, board or something, right? Inside right. that video, we could actually help them layer it on um, and supplement. But we would never be the... Yeah, we, we would suggest not to be the the only thing that is showing okay. the video. So I was going to say, if, you, if you're a publisher who just it doesn't have the f uh, history of producing video or the finances, you don't just like instantly turn all their stuff into video. That's not what you're trying to do. We would discourage it because there is th there's a bigger mission, which I think gets to why I started really broad. Like the, the mission is to have um, that element of empowering the, the studio and the, the editorial team and the monetization team and making it very, um, I would say like, you know, everyone benefits a win, win, win. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want to just kind of replace um, that, that team or something that the publisher is really the bread and butter, yeah. which is the sure. creative element of, yeah. of publishing. You mentioned a handful of customers. Um, the, uh, some of them probably use some of your products and not all of them in terms of this, um, the tool that you're describing, can you give us an example of maybe a publisher or two that are using that to like take stock quotes and create videos or something along those lines? I would say the larger the publisher, the less you would see that because they have large teams that have built yep. out their own. Um, some of the, some of the, the, I would say smaller, more scrappy publishers uh, would, would be using it. Um, just, they may not want us to, to share uh, because okay. they weave it into their own. So I, I wouldn't want to, 
I wouldn't want to disclose anything um, that I'm right, not. Right, because this is like a white label out. solution. <laughs> right, right, exactly, okay. exactly. But the the point is that you wouldn't know it's us. Right, and, and that's the beauty of it. Right, we're we're not supposed to be in the limelight. We're supposed to be very much built into the publisher's um, own workflow, and um, sh- that goes back to our native roots. Actually, mm-hmm. uh, when we first started, we really want this to be the show for the publishers, right. not the Kinetics show. Okay. Um, I want to come, I will come back to the kinetic show in, in a moment, but <laughs> let, let, so let's talk about some of the other p- products or offerings that you have. Cause you mentioned you, you, there's a, con, I believe you're in a contextual advertising product. Um, are you also in the SSP business or do you, do you, do you help publish or you, do you represent other publishers and help them sell out, sell out? I mean, tell us about your advertising business. Is, right. I guess. right. There's, there, we, I always try to visualize the spectrum of what we do by on one end, totally tech, very much SaaS, doesn't even mm-hmm. touch advertising. So bandwidth, CMS, um, ad serving, which kind of touches advertising, but it's not mm-hmm. monetized by us, right? That's on one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is almost entirely monetized by us, and that's the publisher's choice. So on the other side is what you're speaking of. We are, can be, you know, their, their SSP for mm-hmm. all of the inventory that we activate and create um, and enable from that page or through our video player mm-hmm. and, and it could be any of the, anywhere along that spectrum. Okay. So for the pub, for those publishers, are you their, um, are you their primary SSP? Are you one of many? Does it vary? Do you have, do you do private exchanges or what is that? What does that sort of layout look like? Sure. We definitely do private exchanges. That's going into our, our buy side business and, mm-hmm. it, and why we, we do it is we're very related to contextual as well, but to, to kind of go back to your point around, um, are we the only, I think it, it's very rare that you, you have a publisher who only uses one SSP mm-hmm. for everything, but I would say our video player and not that part of the page, that inventory that we're creating and monetizing. Yes. That that's where we are. The only, we may choose to let other people bid in to right. the video player and, and to allow for a competitive auction to happen but that's initiated by right. our technology. 